When do you think it is the best time in business that you should fire yourself from different aspects of the business and begin the delegation process? It's typically not gonna be worth your time. Like 90% of the entrepreneurs in operation, like they have no employees. Women like guys that are just super unserious. Successful idiots, that's like the best way I would like put it for a woman, they like a successful idiot. Boys and girls, children of all ages, it is I. The diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical individual, the chiseled Adonis, and he is a Filipino. Filipino? Prince. Tycoon. Tycoon. F serial entrepreneur, Renee Lacad. And this is We Are Assiduous, episode 31. I did it in reverse this time around. Uh, I was over here trying to grab tickets to uh, Copa America, but for whatever reason, it's not why letting me get two. Phones? two. Um, why do I have two phones? Oh, what, well, one for uh, a work and then one for a uh, personal. Yeah, mm. it's, yeah, it's got to have uh, two different phones. Interesting. Yes, yeah, content phone. And then ultimately, uh, you know, when you do the two of something, one can be 100% business and then the other one 80%. I see your content. You produce so much content. Your content output is ridiculous. Yeah, it it, it, it is a lot. It is a lot. Um, and and it's since given the move, uh, because the tail end of February. By the time this will be out, it'll be in March. So the first two months have been the most difficult of a start to a year that I probably had since maybe 2019. But um. I've been able to now ramp things back up to where it's heavy on Instagram, heavy on Twitter, heavy on YouTube. So there is that. Uh, but yeah, you just got to stay as consistent and just push a bunch of content out. It's impressive, bro. That feeling of just being full on your schedule is, is the great too. Because I've been kind of the same way. I've just been like so beat just because there's so much to do. But life is like that. Like you're always going to have stuff to do. You're never going to have things to do. You just got to keep going. And you got to enjoy that like stress right right because it's good stress it's stress it's that you stress. actually when you were younger it's the type of stress that you said to yourself you wanted to have yeah per se because oftentimes when you think about well you want to be a millionaire or you want to have money are you prepared for the problems that come along with that? So um, if you're somebody who just thinks, well, you know, everything's going to be fixed once the money comes along, you're completely wrong. I see. Well, no, it's crazy because I see like I used to see people like they were doing shit all the time. It's like, yo, right. at 12, I got this. At three, I got this. At four, I got this. At five, I got this. Then at seven, I finally kind of kind of slow down, spend time with my family, sleep, do it again the next day. And it's just schedules packed. Right. And I was like, yo, that's that's lit. I want that. I want to be moving and shaking like that. I want to be making moves. Right. What they don't tell you is it's not as fun as it looks. It's not. It's not. like this morning I was shooting ads. I literally was shooting ads. Now I go here, shoot this podcast. Then we got to go to an event after this, me and my wife. So it's like, it's like boom, 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 back to mm -hmm. back to back to back to back. I guess the positive is at least they're in different locations. So you have a change of scenery. I think oftentimes it can get very monotonous if you're in a situation where everything's done in the same spot. Like yeah. I know people who have Zoom meeting and behind Zoom meeting behind Zoom meeting and they're sitting at their desk inside of their house staring at the wall for hours on end. You're going to be feel like you're in hell. Yeah, <laughs> so. but I think a big part of it, like if you're always just bouncing around, you can never just like... Right, sit down, sit down and like, relax. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that that's where you have to. And one of my um, one of my very close friends, he incorporated um work blocks and stuff. So he would do like a four hour blitz, take a work block, another four hour blitz, take a work block, and then add just whatever time frame that he wants to close out the day with, and then ultimately end the day there. So you put a break in between because I think that traditional eight hour straight with like a thirty minute break, I think that's the worst way to go. If you give yourself a um, um, like let's say if you do it every hour per se, so give yourself 50 minutes of straight blitzing through hard work, 10 minutes off, 50 again, straight through, 10 minutes off, where you can make it work. It all depends on how you structure everything. Yeah, I don't know about these like routine stuff. I was, I was going to say something because me and my friend Julian, we've been messing with this a lot just because he's, he's one of those guys who's like, you know what's pretty gay? A work block. <laughs> <laughs> wow! It was like we were, we, were, we were having sushi, sushi the other yeah. day. There was three different sauces. It was like smoky soy, mm -hmm. like regular soy, or yuzu panzu. 
And Yuzu then Panzu. Yuzu Panzu. And he was like, he only ate one sauce. I was like, oh, you only ate one sauce? He's like, yeah, because other sauces are gay. So like, you know what's gay? Sauces. I'm like, what? <laughs> Is that German humor? He's just like, Yo, Is that German humor? Or like, he drank a blue Gatorade. He's like, it's pretty gay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. drinking a blue Gatorade but it's like work blocks it's one of those things like yo what and here's my thing I'm sure it works for some people I the reason I don't work block because I've heard that before yeah sometimes you get, get in your bag get in the you're flow. in your flow yeah and then for me because I have ADHD I know you hate ADHD because it's mm -hmm. not real but I like if I were to stop if I were to stop for 10 minutes mm -hmm. bro I'm never starting ever again it's it's stopped and that stop is done it's hard for me to like kick back in the gear when I take right. breaks. It all depends on what works the best for you, yeah. I think, and you just have to figure that out because the, the biggest downside, we talked about this before, where the both, the both of us struggle with this, where we'll hit the flow. The only problem is it's 11 p.m. when we finally do go yep. ahead and hit it. So now you're up from 11 to 4, and now you have this irregular sleep pattern where yep. sleep is integral to being able to be at your peak productivity. So... I do agree that it depends on how you navigate through things. I think if, if you're able to be able to get out of something and get right back into the exact same thing without losing focus, then you could do the work block and on the smaller period. If you could do four hours on and then off, but I think it all depends on the type of person that you are. Because if you get burnt out from eight consecutive hours, you shouldn't do eight consecutive hours. Fair. Especially if you're in a situation where you can dictate your schedule. So just yeah. try to, you know, work things around to where it makes sense for you. I think you gotta just pick your poison. Right? You gotta be like, you know what? I love this because it allows me to live a life that I wanna live. Um, I don't know. It's just Some people enjoy that shit. I enjoy it to an extent. I'm like, you know what? It feels good. I enjoy the post feeling. Right, right. I enjoy like the, the like, oh, I did that today. Like it's a because I'm uh, today's one of those days I feel fucking burned already. I'm gonna power through this day. The second I lay my head on that that pillow tonight, I'm gonna feel like ah. Oh. Yeah, me too. I have until the end of this upcoming Saturday. So it's 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 been a 72 hour stretch. I had a total of three hours of sleep. Yeah. And, and thus far, it's been about, I think I'm on hour number 39 now, and I still yeah. have another halfway to go with everything else. But I already told myself this is what was going to happen. So by the time that oh, we're taping this on a Friday, on a Saturday evening comes around, I'm so excited to be able to sleep then because I know I'm going to enjoy myself while just laying there. But I have to re-regulate my body yeah. to the sleep because that's the only downside of when you, when it's irregular and it's all over the place, you, you, you need you your body to get consistent where right? you have to recap. So it, it, it's one of those things. But the one of the, uh, we were talking about this, and this is probably what the biggest part of this episode will be with the burnout and the building of the schedule and a ton of different things that can now be on your plate. Mm -hmm. And you excel at this, and this is something that I have to work on. When do you think it is the best time in business that you should fire yourself from different aspects of the business and begin the delegation process? Oh, that's a good question. I think when it comes to business, here's the thing, right? People think that business is not working, which is completely untrue. Business is only work. You're right. only working. Because even right. when I'm not working, I'm working. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about a hundred different things in my business. Even, I could be laying on the couch and I might not physically be typing something on a computer, but I'm thinking about like, shit, I got this, 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 and this. It's like 12 moving parts. Right. Right? Um, I think the best part to delegate is people think, oh, I'm going to hire people right away. No, you hire people when you have the money to hire people. Because mm -hmm. all, all you're doing, the purpose of hiring someone in a business is to, one, buy your time back, but also, two, be able to use your time to do more. Right. Because think about it. If you can build a business by yourself to 20 grand a month, right? Now imagine if you're making 20 grand a month already and you have all your time back. Now you can get it to 50 grand a month or 100 grand a month. So I always tell people, the best time to hire someone is when you can afford it. Because they always say, oh, you know what? When should I hire someone? Like, I'm, I'm so tired, I'm hustling. I'm like, cool, can you afford to hire someone? Oh no, I just don't have money to hire someone. I'm like, like cool, so you can't hire someone. Because people always say, oh, the reason you're successful is because you could hire people to do the work for you. It's like, no, the fuck it's not. It's because I was able to make enough money to then do it. So the best time to hire someone is when you eventually make enough money to, Greg, I'm a content creator. Let's say you're doing content and you're making 40 grand a month, 50 grand a month, mm. just being a YouTuber, right. right? But you're editing all the videos yourself. You're doing everything yourself. It's like you have more than enough money to hire an editor. 
right. someone to take that, that load off you or an assistant. Mm -hmm. The only reason you don't is because it's not a money, it's not a money issue. It's more so like a, it could be a trust issue or uh, I don't know, you want to like maintain your own stuff issue or you want to save money issue. Right. So hiring someone should always be first whenever it becomes not a money issue. When you can hire someone with ease, that's when you hire someone. It's almost a no-brainer. That's the first expense, your big expense your business should have is a person. Right. I think so. T I think so, too, because it seems as if now, especially with how glamorized, you know, they make entrepreneurship online and everything. There's the solo entrepreneur. I think yeah. there's a percentage to where like 90 percent of the entrepreneurs in operation, like the new entrepreneurs within five years, they have no employees. Like yep. it's an incredible percentage of people who have no employees. I myself, uh, well, although with my brother, that was a different you know situation. I'm in the process of hiring people, whether it just be like 1099s, not people who's just yep. on regular payroll or whatever the case is, but bringing people on to do different things because once you start to reach that burnout stage and you've seen profitability, I think there's a level of complacency that now shows up. So there's the way I would look at it, right? You have to look at how much your time is worth. Because you, as, as a business owner, YouTube entrepreneur, content creator, your time is the most valuable. So some stuff is just not worth your time. Right. Again, editing, unless you have a very unique editing style that no one can replicate, it's typically not going to be worth your time. Because someone can do that. You can pay someone three grand a month to edit your videos for you. Mm -hmm. You know? So why are you going to invest your hard-earned hard -earned time when you could produce another video with the time you're going to save? Because mm -hmm. let's say you have an editor and they, they save, I don't know, uh, 10 hours a week of your time, right? If they save 10 hours a week of your time, that you could make two more videos, you make more money yeah. with that. So the goal is always just to purchase your time back. That's the purpose of an employee. And you have them start by doing something mundane that's not even worth your time. Right, the the simplest part of like hiring someone to get your time back is cooking. Yeah. Do you cook? I, I I don't cook as frequent as I did before, but I I cook here and there. It's probably one of your most expensive habits. Hmm. As a person that's making money, cooking is probably one of, one of your most expensive habits because you can get a meal for thirty bucks. You cooking, let's say you're gonna make a hundred, two hundred bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. You lost one hundred seventy dollars when you do that. I mess with my wife all the time because she's like she's like like can I just have an hour of your day? I'm like listen, my hour is like ten thousand dollars. That's a ten thousand dollar hour right there, you know. That like that, that trip to Disneyland that you wanted, that trip to the that dinner you wanted to go to, or that that hike you wanted to go on, that cost us twenty grand. Mm -hmm. Because as a, a business owner, you have to be able to to put a monetary value on your time, right? Based on what you're actually making, and if it's worth it to just hire someone else to do that because you can get it for way cheaper. Take it out of your life. I take away all the things that that don't require me. Right. So like emails. Um, direct messaging, mm -hmm. uh, emails, direct messaging, probably with uh, the editing, editing. portion. Um, there's that uh, probably, I don't think with ad, no, advertise, at least with the shooting portion yeah. of it. So um, videography, photography, right. things of that nature. Um, what else could there be? Underwriting, mm -hmm. um, underwriting. What else is there? I think there's, there's probably a three more off the top of my head that escaped me. But there's, there's probably a bunch of different things in which you like, all right, I'll just fire myself from here. For, because you wear many hats as, yeah. as a business owner. Because more often than not, a lot of people forget, well, when you first start out, you kind of have to know everything yep. in order to make things Facts. work. And then you kind of bring somebody in who can now diagnose, hey, you need help here, here, here. The reason entrepreneurs make so much money is because they're doing 10 jobs. Right. That's all they're doing. They're doing 10 jobs for no pay, then a little pay, then a lot of pay eventually. Yeah. But you're working 10 jobs. So you're the accountant, you're the bookkeeper, yep. you're the marketer, you're the one that has the product, you're the salesman, you're the emailer, you're the assistant, you're, mm -hmm. you're like 10 different jobs at once. You're administrative. So you're doing all of these 10 jobs. I would remove the easiest ones from your life uh, as soon as possible. That's what I tell people. And you, you want to make it dummy proof. So whenever it comes to like getting a new person, no one will ever replace you. You're irreplaceable as an entrepreneur. But your goal is always to, to get a person that will be one-tenth of you or one-third of you, right? And pay that person. So I, no one's ever going to be able to replace me. I'm just built different in mm -hmm. that sense. But I could find someone that's like, hey, I don't want to send emails to clients. I don't want to talk to clients. I don't want to do phone calls. You take all the phone calls. That's your only job, just to take my phone calls because then I'll get 10 hours of my life back. Right. So depending on what it is, you can outsource people for that. 
you can hire people for that and then eventually buy your time back. Yeah, I, I like that idea because you, you, you want to be able to put other people in the right position for things that you no longer want to do. Yeah. But then I think what a lot of people struggle with is what's the price point? per se like let's just say it's like all right with editing you know how much time uh goes into it and moreover the like the finances for somebody to be paid but if it's like all right hey this person's just all you are is just picking up the phone or whatever what how would you identify the pay scale for something like that i just look at it as like how much you're making so again let's say i'm an entrepreneur i'm making like 30 grand a month right with, by myself or 20 grand a month mm -hmm. by myself as a business owner but i'm spending i don't know 15 hours a week talking to clients or on the phone doing meetings, mm -hmm. or cooking, right? Just whatever's taking, occupying my time. You have to put like an hourly number on it. So it's like, okay, if I'm making 20,000 a month, that's like I'm making, uh, that would be what? Yeah, like a little under a thousand per, per, per day. Thousand per day, yeah, so it's like yeah. 800 bucks per day. Yeah. So like 100 bucks an hour, right? Mm -hmm. Eight hour work day. I'm making 100 bucks an hour. Can I pay someone $20 an hour to give me back, I don't know, t 10 hours of my life or something? Mm -hmm. And then when you have that time back, because think about it, if you're able to create $20,000 with just your time, imagine what you can do now that you have more of it. Right. People don't realize the reason you hire is not to make your life easier, it's to give you more time. Right. Because your life is going to get harder. Like the more time you have, the harder your life gets, yeah. the more money you make, the harder your life gets. And more people you got to go and manage. Every decision you make costs way more money. Yeah. Um, before, like when I was making little minor decisions, I'm like, hey, we should do this in the business. There was not really a lot at stake, right? Let's test this ad. We were spending like 50 bucks a day on ads. It's a $50 decision. Right. As we speak, we spend $4,000 a day on ads. So, hey, let's test this ad. That's a $4,000 decision now. Right. It's a really fucking scary thing to, to look at. But, again, that's, that's just kind of the, the name of the game. Um, you need more time because your time is worth more at the end of the day. People don't put enough value on their time. If you're an entrepreneur and you're making money, you have to value your time more. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing. When you're broke, your time is worth nothing. You have nothing but time. You're time rich. Right. There's, there's money rich, there's time rich, and there's resource rich, right? Mm -hmm. Resource and money rich, I guess same thing. So you're either time rich or you're money rich. If you're time rich, you're broke. Mm -hmm. Or there's people that are both. But let's say you're, you're time rich, you have no money. You only have time, so your time is worth nothing. You have to find a way to make it worth something. So now let's say you, you hustle, you use 8, 10, 12 hours a day, and you build your business doing all this stuff. Now... Three months later, you're making 15 grand a month, 20 grand a month, but you're, you're just working so much. Now you're time poor, but you're money rich, right? You have money, you don't have time now. Right. So now you have to find the balance of that. Okay, how can I put a price on my time and get some of that back and give, give away some of this money for it? So eventually you give away some of that money and you get an extra 10 hours of your life back. So now you have more time, a little bit less money. You use that time to get more money. Now you have even more money to buy more time. You have more money to buy more time. All these big companies, you know what they do? They just have so much money that they're buying so much time right. of other right. people's time. Right. Right? They're buying other people's time because they have so much money. So now when a company like Google, which, which has thousands of employees, they say, hey, we want this done. Boom. It's like that. Hmm. And it's something that would normally take one person a thousand hours to do, but because they have so many people... They get it done in two days. So then what would you use as an example for uh, resource rich? Would that just be a matter of like networking or things of that nature? Well, resource rich is like almost like money rich. Because okay. money, money will just get you everything. Because there's people that are rich in money and time. Right. Money and time people rich are like, uh, what's a good example? Retired people. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of time. Um, and that's kind of the goal, because then you could do whatever you want. You could spend your time on an yeah, island. Yeah, that fuck you kind that, of yeah, situation. Yeah, fuck you money is money and time. Right, right. You know, so that's, that's kind of what it is. It's a balancing act of like, do I have enough time? Do I have enough money? If you feel like you don't have either, you're lying to yourself. Right, and there's or also- you're, sell, you're selling your time for too little. And there's also that, uh, um, that hurdle that a lot of people don't jump over where, let's say with uh, ROAS, like the return on ads or, or whatever the case is, if marketing, if you want to go out of your pocket and let's say you're spending $4,000 a day, but if you're able to generate 20,000 per day, that seems like a fair trade-off. Yep. But when you're testing something out for the very first time and you're investing that four thousand you have to be willing to lose that and yeah. i think a lot of people get married to how much they make that they don't want to go and actually invest that back into the business what's weird i think the issue with society people put more value on money than they do time mm -hmm. 
when we're rich people, they put more value on time than they do money. It's a weird paradigm shift that like every entrepreneur goes through the more money they make. The more money they make, they realize, holy shit, money is worthless. Time is more valuable than money. Mm -hmm. But people that are broke, they don't value their time. They value the money more. Right. So let's say someone wants to invest in a business. They're like, ah, no, I want to save this money. I'd rather just work for the rest of my life. They'll give away their time for money. It's a weird thing where like people don't equate the two because they don't value their own time. You know, like for me personally, I value my time. Whenever someone says, hey, you want to do this? I think about like what it's going to cost me to do that. And sometimes I'll be like, yeah, you know, like things I love. Like we, we've hung out sometimes. We've gotten hookah. We've played basketball. Right. Love stuff like that. I'll, I'll waste time for that. It's not really a waste of time because I'm enjoying it. It's giving me like dopamine, like, right? Like, like in, a, in a healthy way. Um, but hey, you want to like have lunch? I'm like, it's a fucking Wednesday, middle of the day, money making time. You want to have lunch right now? No, get away from me. You have to like assess like, is this worth your time? Because time is money at the end of the day. They say that and people, for some reason they hear it, but they can't piece it together in their head because they have no way to like, most people sell their time for too little. Yeah, because even if you look at like an hourly rate, if somebody's getting paid minimum wage, you're getting $15 an hour. They always say, yeah. is, your, is your life worth $15 an hour? Or is it, is, or if, if this 60 minutes just passed, you're worth only 15 right. and you're replaceable at that. It's almost you have to find ways to go and quantify it so it, under, it makes sense. It's weird because you, you get like hate from. So I get hate from people and like those, that like mean urge comes out. They're like. You're like, money isn't everything, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, if money isn't everything, why are you giving up your entire life for it? Mm -hmm. If money wasn't everything, why are you sacrificing 40 hours a week to go get it? If money wasn't everything, like, motherfucker, I can buy you right now. You have a price on you. You're, you're working a job making $20 an hour. I can, fucking lit I can literally fucking buy you. I can make you my slave for $20 an hour, which is crazy. It sounds harsh, but it's true. So how are you going to say money isn't everything when a person can buy you for a monetary value? No one could buy me. I mean, people can buy me, but it's, it's going to be a lot more. Right. You know, you're right. looking at everybody's like a, got a price. Like a, a uh, not everybody. Like Elon Musk, you, can't, you can't buy Elon Musk. Well, yeah, fair That's enough. That's like a big thing. But so it's like, yo, you can't like it's, it's a lot harder to buy me than it is to buy you. So you can't say money isn't everything when you're sacrificing your entire life for money. You know, that's just the way I see it. It's, it's one of those things where time and money have a weird thing. And pe in order to get rich, you just have to combine the two and realize they're the same thing. Right. Money is just compressed time. Yeah, it's, it, it, that's a great way to put it. That's a, a, a very great way to put it because I think a lot of people find themselves struggling with that. Like, it's like, all right, well, you know, I have the time or I should say you don't have the time. You're just now getting the money. And then the rush that you get from getting the money puts you in a situation where like, I don't want to let this go. But there's a lot of people who immediately they get it. It clicks. So once you start making that money, now I'm at the five grand a month. I'm at the seven now i'm at the 10 i'm at the 15 i'm at the 20 you immediately take that and reallocate it right back into the business and all of a sudden now you start to jump from 20 to 30 to 40 because a lot of people don't consider the operational cost for how much people are making if you're making a million dollars a year you think they just make a million and you only you know you keep nine hundred and eighty thousand. that's not yeah, how it no. works you'll make that million in the year you'll probably you take home maybe a hundred grand maybe 200 250 whatever the case is or depending on whether it be taxes then overhead and all the other stuff that is in um, incorporated in it but you're able to continually accelerate that over time and then after about five some years now you're bringing in the big money or you could go and sell the business after it's now scaled to an incredible number and then you get that lump sum on the back end so you got almost have to understand um in the time being what the end goal is and kind of reverse engineer at that yeah. because if you really want to grow if you really want to get exposure you can't do that without getting in front of a new audience yep. per se so you want to be in a situation where you can now outreach and put the money into different sort of places and truly take a step back from a bunch of different things email you can't go and you'll be the best emailer out there if you're constantly taking phone calls Facts. or you're constantly recording videos and having to do the underwriting or whatever you can't go out there and be the best you know producer or uh, um, content creator if you're constantly having to deal with the sales and all the yep. other stuff that's going on. So you have to find ways to incorporate other people into so things. This is the way I look at it. This is the way it works, how it should work. If you want to get rich, this is literally the formula when it comes to time and money. You use your time to make money. Now you take that money coupled with your time, you use that time and money that you have now to make more money. 
right? So you use your time to make money, you use your money and time to make more money, you use that money to buy more time, you use that time to make more money, you use that money to buy more time, you use that time to make more money, so on and so, for, so forth, until you have all the money, you have a, a ton of money mm -hmm. that you have enough to buy all of your time back. And that number, in order to buy all of your time back, realistically, if I wanted to, I could work maybe an hour or two a day, uh, make 100 grand a month, 150 grand a month. That number's somewhere around like 70 to $100,000 a month, you can buy all of your time back. Right. And have everything running relatively on autopilot. But until you get there, it's just a, a constant cycle of like time and money, time and money. Like use your, when I say use your time to make money, go use your time, get a job, make some money. I don't know, does, it could be anything. I'm gonna work at Starbucks. I'm gonna uh, edit videos for entrepreneurs. I'm gonna, um, Anything, clean houses, do lawns, whatever. You use that time to make money. Great, I've saved $5,000. Let me take this $5,000, let me learn a skill that's gonna allow me to, to multiply how much I can make on my time. So right. now I know how to, to, now I know about cameras so I can get paid more because I, I invested in a camera. Now I have a good camera quality. I have a setup like David, which allows me to make more with my time, mm -hmm. right? Now I can make more money. Now that I have more money and more, and more time, I can get even better. I can find more people. I can hire someone to help me find more clients. Right. So now David's, David, a uh, producer with the cameras, now he's setting up, after this, he's going to set up somewhere else and he's making more money and setting up somewhere else and making more money. So now he's making more money. He's like, great, now that I have all this money, let me buy more of my time. I'm yeah. going to hire someone else to set up for me. Mm -hmm. So now he hires someone else to come set up cameras for him while he's doing another job over there. So he's doubling his income, making more money, spending that money to get more of his time back, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, until eventually he owns a massive production company. He doesn't even set up cameras anymore. It started with him buying a camera, right. or buying equipment, and now he doesn't do any of it. He sits in his office, and all of his guys come and do the setups and film the podcast and do all that stuff. Yeah, and it goes back to, I think you said a while back about how you have to, based off of what you buy, find a way for that to make money for you, how yep. the microphone makes money for you, the camera makes money for you, the lights make money for you. You want to be in a situation to where when you do spend that money, it makes sense. Um, one of my mentors always say he doesn't buy um, stuff to show off. He buys them to write off mm. per se so then you always find a way to make it work for something okay i'm gonna go buy this car uh, let me put this car in every ad that i shoot every video nice. that it's in there so that way it can produce something and I can get something from it because I the people get way too married to how much money it is that they make. And I think oftentimes whenever somebody says, hey, I make uh, 10 grand or I make 20 grand, oftentimes it's not very consistent because entrepreneurship is always up and down, right? You usually yeah. take your best month and you run with that one. Yeah. But more often than not, people are unwilling to go and Unma or I should say divorce themselves from that income because re realistically speaking and I think one of my other mentors they do this where uh, he's a credit guru and he essentially lives his whole life off credit I believe if his entire business were to just break even the points that he's been able to accumulate gotcha. off of a bunch of cards because I know yeah. you're thinking like wait how, how does he do it don't yeah. you have to pay that back if you're just you spend 400 grand on advertising and you make 400 and you grand. make 400 you pay off all of the debts or whatever the amount of points that are being accumulated you could fly to Dubai you can go you can to Africa to hotel, you could go yeah. wherever you want because everything is going to be paid through the cars Facts. so even if you broke even even, you're still seeing a profit. So oftentimes people look at it like, hey, um, I'm not successful unless I'm making the 10 grand a month. That now brings you to the six figure mark, which I always hated the terminology. Yeah. That's between 100,000 and 999. But once you get to that seven figure, really consider what you would consider big money. Because if you have credit card, points, it's almost the same as cash, depending on how you want to do it. It's weird because it's all perspective, right? Right. Like, I think about it all the time. I be, getting, I be getting into my feelings. I'm like, yo, I'm a baller. I'm a beast. And then I see other people. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm kind of weak compared to them. Right, right. There's always a bigger fish. Right, always right. Always a bigger, bigger dog somewhere. And it's you know? weird because you don't want to compare yourself for the vanity reasons because if you're going to compare yourself you want to look at it from a perspective of hey i want to be able to get to this level 
so I can level up and then achieve a bit more and experience a bit more. Like, for example, if you was to go on a uh, a two month like tour around, you know, the UAE to all yeah. the different sort of locations, you could probably go over there and explore a certain percentage of the spot. But if it was like a three month, a, qu- a quarter of the year, just exploring, you probably can't afford to do something like that's a whole other level. Right. So in order to get to that particular level, you got to do a bit more. But for somebody else, they could look at it like, oh, no, for me, all I want to do is just make it to Dubai. I just want to see one spot. Yeah. I want to go to Greece. I just want to go to Mykonos. I could care less about Athens and Santorini or whatever the case is. I just want to go to Ghana. I don't want to go to Morocco or Egypt and all this other. Right. Stuff. So you can achieve that if you identify how that works. But then a lot of people ultimately find themselves getting caught up in the Joneses and everything of that nature, trying to keep up. And then they end up, you know, not getting to the goal that they originally set. It's hard because it, it gets easy to get lost in the sauce. That's yeah. what it is. Like, a great example. I see my fr- I have a great life. If I look at my life, I've really done it all. I came from nothing. I built a beautiful family, got a beautiful place. I could die now and as an accomplished human being, having lived a better life than 99.99% of people. Yeah. So I could, that could be very good. But then I just hang out with my friends and have fuck you money. Yep. And she's like, yo, you're doing it different. <laughs> right. You know? And I think people will always see that no matter where you're at. Because no matter where you're at, there's always going to be some people that are above you, some people that are below you. Right. No matter what. So when I was completely broke, I saw my friends with a BMW. There was this dude. He was a little older than me. Had a BMW 3 Series. Mm. I thought it was the coolest fucking thing. That car is like 30 grand. I thought it was the coolest fucking thing. He had this car, though. And I was like, yo, if I could have that, that's the goal. Mm. I'd be living good You know Girls like them He was just driving His little BMW Right Now I look at these guys With BMW 3 Series And no offense to anyone That drives a BMW 3 Series <laughs> yeah, It's, a, I'm just it's beneath you now I'm like I'm like this Right like, I spent I spent your entire Car payment on fucking I don't know A wedding ring For my wife Like I, I did something Crazy like that You know So it's like I look at that I'm kind of like this is no longer the flex to me. Right. You but grow out of it. You you almost yeah. like, yeah, grow out in of it. In stages. But then I see my friends, they, he has a boat in his backyard. I'm right. Like, Fuck, this is a flex. It's like you rent a yacht on the weekends. He has a yacht yeah, on the bro. weekends and the weekday. It's like, oh shit, well, I got another I got another level to get to. And it's, it's very funny how when you look at it like, okay, cool, I could finally flex, but then you can only flex to a certain degree. So then you go and you look like, oh man, you know, and it's not, it's not out of jealousy there's a slight bit of envy that could be there but then it's a healthy kind because it's, it's motivating you to continually grow well it's not even envy it's more so that like here's the thing we're all equal as human beings we're all equal mm. me you david like we're all equal we all have the same opportunities i'm not smarter than anyone i'm not more talented than everyone i think me being able to accept that like some people think just i'm better than this person that's why i have more i think that's a toxic poisonous mindset right i think we are all the same we all have the same opportunities so why does this person how is he able to do this and i can't do it Mm -hmm. that that's what trips me out you know like i think it should piss people off when they see other people doing stuff and like damn how come i can't do that it's, it's a very real thing like i i don't know man i'll see people that have stuff and i'm like I want to fucking do that. Right. And this could be any aspect of life. It could be like, it doesn't have to be even monetarily. It could be someone like, yo, he got a great relationship with his wife and they got a beautiful family. But why can't I do that? Mm-hmm. Let's say there's a rich guy, but he's lonely. He got no bitches. Right. Women don't like him. And he sees someone with a happy family. He's going to have that. He's like, yo, if they right. could do it, I could do it. Right. It doesn't have to be just be monetarily. So people are always going to be, have like an extension or like someone that's like right above them. So I don't know if you should look at it as envy, but like you should look at it as like, yo, that's freaking awesome. I want that. Right. And and what, the beautiful thing about it and that we could uh, we could pretty much close with this portion here where it's a matter of um, having the willingness to, you know, not necessarily just educate yourself, but then also try to build a connection to understand how somebody was done it, whether the framework behind what's necessary to get to that particular kind of level. Because sometimes you could look at somebody like, man, I wish I had a life like, well, why don't you just ask them how they did it <laughs> why don't you ask how they did it sometimes you got to pay to play sometimes you could just have a regular generic conversation where it doesn't come off needy because i think that's an issue that a lot of people have to where that oh well tell me exactly what it is that you did when you know somebody's selling you know the information as to how yeah. they did it or even the worst is like when when people don't want to because i've seen this before like there's 
entrepreneurs will go out to dinner and we'll just hang out. We just want a casual day. Right. Yo, how's your day? What are we doing tonight? Like, what's the plan? And someone will come there with just business mindset. Wait, so how did you do it? Right. Wait, so this is what you do? What about this and this? And it's like, bro, you're killing the vibe for everybody. Right. Just be chill, you right. know? Um, so I think it's I think it's okay to ask, but I think it's better to just study. Right. Don't ask questions about it. Study. So here's a big thing that I'm realizing lately: a lot of these guys on that next level, that level above uh, where I'm at, they don't drink or like do any drugs. They're all like super sober people. Mm -hmm. You know, like they'll have a drink occasionally here and there, but they're not people that like. Yeah, they're not heavily hitting the bottle. They're not, yeah, they don't enjoy drinking. They don't enjoy that stuff. So for me, I've been cutting back on like all my drinking. I'm like, let me study this person. I'm cutting back on all the alcohol. I'm not going to be drinking as much. Uh, I'm going to avoid like all that stuff. Because these guys, almost all of them, they don't drink. Or if they drink, it's like they'll drink on occasion. Right. So I see that. I'm like, this is cool. That's, a, that's like an observation. So you could just look at these people and observe what they do. I observe you all the time. Like, it sounds weird. No homo. I observe you. <laughs> no, no, we'll pause. I observe you all the time. You're a very diligent worker. You know, I see that. I'm kind of like, okay, this is what makes this person successful because he doesn't really have a, a pause button. He just goes, you know? So when I see successful people, I'm kind of like, this is what makes them successful. I'm like, I'm curious. I'm observational. And I'm like, okay, so how, how do I replicate that? to get that result for this guy. Right, and I think when you, when you said research, that's big because a lot of times people always play like 21 questions with people. And I find it funny because if you're a good conversationalist, you're able to get the information you were searching for without having to ask for it. More often than not, I would make a statement that I know could either you know, pull a trigger off of somebody to correct me with yeah. the information that I was initially searching for. Like, for example, you're in social media marketing. Yeah. So I would just essentially be like, well, you know, um, I think going like door to door in business, like we could just be having a chill conversation and I can set it up Steer in, a, in, it, in yeah. a way to where it doesn't come off so businessy. Right. Like, well, yeah, you know, I walked in here. I noticed they didn't have any social media um, here at all. They have such great food. It's a shame. I guess their business will never grow. And then it could immediately because this is your expertise yep. that'll have your eyebrows going through your hairline wait a minute hold on wait there's an opportunity to make money over here and you'll start talking about what you're passionate about yep. and naturally I'm getting answers and now we're masterminding just based off of me just leaving a little trigger you know just, well, just planting a little seed into your mind without having to say hey so tell me how you would get in contact with the owner or how you would build a partnership over here you just you slowly plant like a seed even with with sports or whatever if there was lebron is eating dinner and you're lucky enough to go and have dinner with him and his people or whatever the case is you'd be like man don't even bring up the fact that he spends a million dollars be yeah. like yeah you know i'm i'm over here trying to go and get a massage and then also with the diet i'm so, I, i'm trying i think maybe i'll just get rid of the massages and just focus on the diet it seems like massages does nothing for the body to keep yourself you know ready for the next game lebron will eat me well wait a minute hold on now yeah i'm spending 400 grand a year on massage what do you see if you go and you get this massage now he's telling me exactly what i wanted without having to ask well him. it's like Sales is the same exact way. Mm -hmm. It's like you kind of lead people in the direction because people assume sales is like, yo, you're going to buy this right now. That's not what sales is at all. Right. Someone that's been in sales for a really long time, sales is almost like leading them to the desired outcome. Right. It's like them making sense of it. It's like, oh, well, you want to do this, right? It's like, oh, how do you plan on doing that? Then they answer, oh, you want to become a YouTuber? Like, how do you plan on doing that? Um, I haven't really thought about it yet. I was like, what, what do you think you would have to do? He was like, well, I think I would have to post a lot of videos. I would take a lot of videos. I'm like, okay, like, dope. Like, oh, have you thought of like schedule when you're gonna do that? Like, you're asking them questions. You're not telling them what to do at all. It's always just asking questions that lead to the right thing. Right. And it's almost like the same thing as what you're saying. Like, you ask a question that gets the response you want. Right. Right. Without being annoying, without being right. needy. Because too often people go in so strong. It's almost like dating. Yeah. You go in, you go in way too strong, and then immediately that turns the person off. If you put it to where it feels like a natural, flowy conversation, all of a sudden you'll sit there and they'll find themselves talking and yeah. talking and talking, and you're just sitting there like, all right, cool. You get all the info you were looking for without having to directly. The you know, second go. it gets too serious. Yeah people feel weird about it right even like the the thing you said with dating like it's i was thinking about it, like women like guys that are just super unserious right just like 
successful idiots. That's like the best way I would like put it for a woman. They like a successful idiot. Um, there was a girl one time. She's like a Palestinian, and she was feeling this dude. She loved this dude, um, and she goes, she's like, she's like, yeah, I'm Palestinian. He's like, oh, that's what's up, free Palestine, baby. Like, just a complete idiot. I'm like, bro, you're such an idiot. Mm -hmm. But like, the girl's like, ha, <laughs> like laughing and like hitting, like touching his arm, and like, I'm like, yo, like, cause guys think, oh, Palestine. The wrong way to go would be like, yo, it's it's really sad what's going on there, blah blah. Cause she's like, what the hell. But she's like, yo, this is up, free Palestine, baby. It's like, he's so unserious mm -hmm. that like, she just thought it was funny. She was laughing. It's yeah, because in that moment, it's not even like, because especially w judging by how the response went to where it was like, oh, wow, something like that began a conversation that could now get carried and moving forward. Because the last thing you want to think about is genocide or whatever the yeah, case. So I'm now saying. we're going deeper. Hey, you know, back in 1948, when this actually happened over here, and this is what actually caused this over here. So what we think we can do, nobody's trying no to- one likes that. They're not trying to, in that particular kind of environment. That's not what you're looking for. Yeah. So with that being the case, you got to be able to read people and have an understanding of how you can get the information that you're looking for or the right. outcome that you desire without having to go too heavily it's never too into it. Right. It's, it's never, never that too deep. It's always going to be conversational and chill. And if you get the information in a conversational and chill manner. That's the best way to go about it, bro. Right, right. 100%. 100%. And, and that's big. That's big. And we, we talk about networking uh, a ton. And, and I, I always implore people, go out, conversate with people, just try different methods, and you would be surprised who you may encounter. You could run into somebody in the elevator. Like, oh, it's interesting laces. Just you do random. That. I see you do it all the time. All the time. There's, yeah. just, it, there's just something very random. I, I would never be like, oh, wow, yeah, that's a great, you know, magnificent mustache or whatever. I'll just mention the most random thing. Like, oh, wow, it's, it's, uh, I never knew you could get a pimple on the side of your neck. What? What the, oh, no, you don't. Oh, this, something must have been wrong with my eye. Yeah. And then begin a conversation right and it there. it starts, yeah. Like, That's go to really the airport. Good. You don't even have to have a boarding. But you, before you go through scan, just go with it. Just talk to people. Even if you don't like people, just regular, just one just person one per day. Just one conversation. You slowly work those soft skills because that's incredibly essential. All of a sudden, the people who you looked up to when you was kids, like, oh, this person's so cool or this movie character's awesome or whatever, you'll become that just off of just being able to talk. I think it's also one thing when, it, when it's, you don't realize, you, you, people are so worried about what other people are gonna think about them that they don't realize like, people care more about themselves. They, other people feel the exact same way. Mm -hmm. There's a skit on SNL. It's like a, the Chad skit with Pete Davidson. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't think so. It's pretty much he's like just a, a Chad where it's like, uh, there's always like a girl and they'll take just random girl. Like one's like Kim Kardashian. One time they had JLo doing it. And his character is always just like sick, dope. And like the, the female character will always want to sleep with him because he's just like, yo, sick. They're like, they're like, you're such a good listener. He's like, sick. Right. Dope. Right. And like, yo, Chad, can you, there was one with Elon Musk, like, Chad, can you save us from Mars? He's like, okay. <laughs> like, just all one word responses and the, the person's like building the, they're carrying the entire narrative and the story. Right. And he's like, sick, cool. Yeah. And like, the other people like love him and he's like, like totally just. Because he's carefree. Yeah. So I, I think people don't realize how easy it is to start a conversation because people just care about themselves. They're not really looking at like you and what you're gonna say because people think I have to say the perfect thing, right? Or I'm gonna get judged and I'm gonna look stupid and I'm gonna be this and that. Like, bro, you can literally say anything, right? You can say anything and people won't care as long as as you're just being authentic to yourself and you just, just chill. You know, you're like, yo, it is what it is. Hundred percent, hundred percent, man. This is the, the, this is why it's so incredibly important to not only watch this show but also <laughs> share it with uh, your friend, family, a uh, significant other, whoever the case may be. Make sure that you get an opportunity to learn a bunch of different things, whether it be in entrepreneurship, whether it be in life, whether it be about anything. All right, where you learn here how to fire yourself from. You need to share your this business. episode because we are currently making fifteen cents a day. A day with this podcast. Yep. 15 How cents are we a day. supposed to save starving puppies bur and burning buildings with 15 cents a day? An angel fly away from here. So we, you need to share this, you need to comment this, you need to watch every single episode, every single clip we drop. Right. Oh, we're going to stick pencils inside of dogs' paws. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, maybe... Not all the dogs, just 
Some of the dogs. Some of the dogs. Some of the dogs. Some of the dogs will get pencils inside of their paws. We cannot confirm or deny it will be us who's putting the paws inside of the pencils. But one way or another, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys click down below. Hit that like button. Make sure you leave a comment. Subscribe. And above all else, make sure that you share the assiduous podcast. It, once again, it is I, the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical individual, the, the Chisel the Donis. He is a serial entrepreneur, the Filipino you know, prince, prince tycoon, tycoon. Renee Lacan. And this is We Are Assiduous. Watch the motherfucking podcast! Yeah!